Hey everyone, today we are going to talk about ghost zones, which are areas where price can have a lot of momentum and which are areas that are the path of least resistance for the price. So these are zones where price can move freely and the knowledge of where these zones exist can be very powerful and can be very helpful for all kinds of traders because if we are starting to go towards let's say if you're starting to go from 100 to 110 and we know that there is a ghost zone between one 100 to 110 in the price then we can assume that price might quickly move towards 110 instead of facing a lot of resistance in between 100 and 110 so that's the concept are there regions are there regions that we can find and claim that are ghost regions where price can move freely without facing a lot of support and a lot of resistance. So where does this idea come from and how do we go about finding these ghost zones? So before we do that, we need to discuss dealer positioning and uh, hedging in the options market. So this is the dealer open interest. And then we also have the, the fairly normal open interest by strikes that people see. This is for Apple. And the green and red bars are the total number of, number of calls and puts contracts open right now for Apple. And you can see that there are a huge number of call and put contracts open in the market right now for all these different strikes. Now that means that customers are sitting on a large number of calls and puts for almost every single level that Apple has or for almost every single sort of contract that Apple offers, especially for contracts with slightly round numbers such as 150, 155, 160, 165, 170. Okay. When we buy an options contract, and this is the important part that will lead us to ghost uh, regions and ghost zones. When we buy an options contract, uh, the dealer is a dealer or a market maker is there to provide us liquidity so they are going to sell us a contract but when they sell us a contract they want to stay delta neutral so they are going to hedge that position the sold call let's say we try to we are trying to buy an apple call they are going to sell us that call but then they are going to buy the underlying shares in order to hedge that sold call position because selling a call is a bearish position they are going to hedge that uh, with the amount that's proportional to the delta of that call so let's assume the delta is 0 0.5 what they're going to do is they're going to sell us a call but then buy 50 shares of apple so that any time price makes a move they are fully hedged they are not uh, there with a direction in the market because they do not want to be directional they want to be hedged and that's their job now now an idea comes from there what if we can find regions where market makers are not present at all or where the presence of market makers is very minimal. The idea here is if we can find those regions, then those might be regions where there is very minimal activity by market makers. So all these complex types of hedgings that they have to do, the delta hedging, then the gamma hedging, then the vanna hedging because of implied volatility, then the charm hedging because of time. So the options landscape is so complex that, that it might take years for retail traders to understand it fully or for platforms for for platforms like us to have very solid tools to illustrate all kinds of dynamic hedging but until we go there is there an easier way and i believe yes there is an easier way and that easier way is to actually look at zones or regions where market makers have a very minimal presence because when price is moving from those zones then market makers might not be as present as they will be when price reaches towards or when price reaches at zones where market makers have a big presence meaning where market makers have sold or bought a lot of contracts because those are the regions where market makers are going to have a lot of activity and when they have a lot of activity things can get very complex and it is hard to anticipate where price might move and things just in general get us get slightly harder obviously if we understand dealer positioning and we have many videos on how to understand dealer positioning how to use things like deltas gammas venas that's 
that's an important thing and if it, if you do understand that then you can leverage that as well to anticipate where price might go that's very meaningful and powerful as well but not every retail trader can understand all these complex creeks so why not go where the ease is and why not find regions where market makers just don't exist that much even if they do like they are not uh, with with a lot of strength and that's what we call uh, that's what we call ghost zones these are zones with very minimal activity and presence by market makers how do we find these zones uh, we find these zones by looking at uh, these dealer open interest or the open interest even by customers and we try to find zones or regions of price where the open interest or the number of contracts that the dealers are sitting at si sitting uh, are not very high and we uh, and we say high in relative terms so let's say if normally uh, dealer deltas let's say if dealers are sitting on 500 million contracts on a particular strike and now they're sitting only on like 50k contracts that in relative terms is a very low value so that could be a ghost region let's say there are even less uh, lesser contracts and, no, and we are not just talking about the open interest here we find these levels also by using gamma exposure van exposure and other kind of exposures and let's assume if it's not just that the contracts are not that much on a level or on a zone it's also that the gamma exposure is almost non-existent in a particular zone now that zone has a higher probability of being a ghost zone because they're just does not exist any delta or gamma or let's assume uh, vana exposure so dealers won't be doing anything once the price uh, moves towards uh, moves through those regions so that's the concept i hope uh, it was clear enough and i explained it well but let's actually look at a couple of examples i think that will clear things up so i'm going to open up the five minute chart and i am going to this is just a simple chart so the first thing we are going to look at is where are the dealer deltas sitting and please know that deltas are always hedged right away so they are not dynamically hedged we dynamically hedge them because of gamma but not because of deltas themselves so but still it's important to know where people spent a lot of their money on like which strikes and which contract so let's go to the greeks level let's go to delta and let's plot top levels so it looks like uh, the 160 has a lot of sh uh, long delta through dealers which means people are short and then the 155 is where dealers have a lot of short delta which would mean customers are on the opposite end so they are long delta long delta is a bullish position so the very first thing that we can assume and these levels are there before this day starts that's important to know like i'm not just looking at historical data and you can't just say like i'm cherry picking like these levels were there before we started the day so now the very first thing that we can assume here is that 160 could be a level of resistance because customers are sitting at short delta so they probably bought some puts sold some calls around 160 level so that's a good way of also understanding delta levels they are not going to be hedged like again and again because of delta itself but still where do they exist where are large quantities of uh, contracts that's important okay so that's the first now these gray bars or these gray regions that we just drew out those are potential ghost zones but delta alone is not enough gamma is also something that contributes to dynamic hedging and gamma is very important as well so let's go one step further we'll stick to these two steps because i think these are simple and people will understand them let's go one step ahead and let's also plot the gamma exposure okay now we have three levels the 155 157 i believe and then 160 and we are looking at a five minute chart now when the day starts what we can expect is any time the price is close to these colored regions which are regions where dealers are sitting where there are contracts where there is gamma there is delta some kind of hedging is going to happen we, we want to stay away from that hedging but 
if we can somehow break this level then we might have some momentum from 160 towards 157 so we tried that at the start of the day and we obviously failed here but we went up and now you can you can see this the price starting to get choppier so went up went down went up then weird kind of candles and then we start finally started to go down around here so this would be a nice candle because you can see the volume ticking up as well so at around this point you can make an educated guess that we might be able to quickly move from here to here without much resistance okay and we did but you might also say that it was a volatile day so that's just cherry picking i'd agree with you but let's look at other examples so here as soon as we went into that level and you can see like how we are having these big green candles in this region as soon as we hit that level again we started to find some resistance uh, we, we couldn't go up or down we, we found some resistance close to this level as well but still once we like broke below this level you can see a pretty easy move from here all the way to here and then where did we find support we found a lot of support here and then we found support here as well the next day we opened we found resistance at that region then we went down we found support at the next region but look at all look at how price has been moving through these gray levels it's not finding a lot of resistance and support when it starts moving through these gray levels so it moved right away didn't find anything here and then moved right away all the way to 155 then at this day found some support then moved quickly all the way to this level now at this level we started finding some resistance as well and then a quick gap up again through this level where did we stop in to the next uh, big degree level so that's actually it like that's how you find these ghost zones you look at the deltas and you look at the gamma then you can also look at vanas and you see where you see where there is not enough deltas and gammas and those are the regions that you should care about and those are the regions that are that could give you a lot of momentum in pricing let's actually look at spy and see if we had some regions there as well and look at the five minute chart again all right okay then i'll disable the anchored vwap and i'll enable let's just do the jex levels because these were the ones that i was looking at okay let's actually do delta as well just all right it's gonna okay yeah so it's it got a little bit messier which is why i was I didn't want to use delta levels because I've seen a lot more success with gamma levels than with delta levels. So I'll go back and use just the JEX levels. These work the best. This screen, you can see we, we opened here. And then as soon as we went down, we went into these levels where there was gamma. Gamma was existent there. And we, we as soon as we hit those levels, we started finding support. Then we very quickly move through this small uh, ghost zone we went above it but then again we hit this level so close to this level we couldn't really break through easily now we went from here to here with some momentum and this is where like it was just a very volatile move so you can say like this this move wasn't something or this move wouldn't be something where you would expect a lot of volatility and Obviously, you cannot predict everything with 100% accuracy. We are just trying to find things that we can use to sort of know where price might easily move. And once we like enter into this ghost zone, you can see now here, like sure, we weren't able to predict this price or like how easy we went from here to here. But from here to here, we are like, expecting that the price would not find much resistance or support. And that is exactly what happened. So you can see very easily a couple of green candles here and there, but we very easily moved from 
this level all the way to this level and the beautiful thing here is that these are not like round numbers this is like 397 396 going to 392 so it's not like we are going from 400 to 390 or we are going from like 410 to 400 and you can say like these are psycho psychological levels round numbers things like that these are like meaningful ghost zones where price is moving freely not just today you can also see that the price once like once we were around this region once we were around uh, this region price like kept moving around this region because this was a large level but once we somewhat broke through it you can see the next move we went uh, towards the next big camera level very quickly and this is a phenomena that you'll see very often and i i believe the theory is what we discussed is that since dealers are not sitting there it's easier for the price to move freely now if there are other kinds of factors such as a huge volume profile uh, then we, then we could find some support or resistance there volume profile is a big thing that you can add with these ghost levels and if there is like a shallow volume profile and then we have these ghost zones then that provides you more confidence that price will move very freely and uh, the only criticism that uh, there could be for ghost zones is like uh, sometimes they might uh, have confluence with uh, volume profile and that's again completely fine but there will there'll be many times where these ghost zones are actually going to beat volume profile and they are going to give you zones where price is going to move very freely and i just think that's such a cool tool for day traders and for all kinds of traders to be able to know where price might move freely in and where might where price might find a lot of chop supports resistances uh, things like that so i hope you find it as cool as i find it uh, we'll soon hopefully label these regions as ghost regions or ghost zones uh, but right now i just wanted to figure out a cool name i think that the ghost name fits because nothing is there in these levels the price can move freely let me know in comments uh, how do, uh, how much are you liking the idea what do you think about it and if you have any criticism or feedback for this uh, thank you so much uh, you'll only find this on our platform right now you can find these levels uh, by just like exporting them to trading view this is how they look uh, but just consider these like dark regions between these levels as ghost zones uh, but sort of the, the clear distinction and these gray bars and these drawings these are only available in our pl platform right now. Uh, so that's it uh, for the video. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you guys around.